Conquest of the Planet Conquest. of the Apes. That was like, and again, that starting off with Conquest, that's that's a total recall movie because it is like, uh, so and, and it was it was the um, like unreleased director's cut, which is uh, and and it, it was recommended by Quentin Tarantino. He said yeah. this is the best Apes film. Is the uh, and not the regular Conquest is pretty great, but the director's cut of Conquest is like amazing. So it's, good. It's and it's just it, the changes. The differences are tiny, but like in terms of like screen time and, and things. But there's there so much like it. it um, it's more violent. There's a lot more like scenes where like a uh, you know where like ape faces like kind of blow up in yeah. like bursts of red as they're getting shot at. Gruesome. And then the ending, like they kind of stitched together an ending in the theatrical release, like in the release that like we've seen all our lives, that kind of tones things down. Yeah. But like um, the, the director's cut just is calling for like all out revolution, you know, burn down the city and stuff. So it was it, awesome. It, you know, really great. Like just, just those little changes. It, it was amazing. So that was like a great one to start with. But it's like, why not talk about the first one? Talk about yeah. Planet of the Apes. Uh, and I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. I am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee. And Jack Kirby's Star Warriors, The Adventures of Adam Starr and the Solar Legion. I'm also the author of Witchman, a new superhero comic book. I'm Matt Zioli. Planet of the Apes, it's like, it's just like one of those things that's just kind of part of the texture of popular culture like it's hard to imagine a world without it yeah a world without it like i would was watching it kind of like the same time i was watching bond movies like it would there would be marathons on tv and just like you you know you put on one planet of the apes movie and it, and it would just flow into mm -hmm. another one you wouldn't i couldn't really tell the difference between them when i was little because they were like yeah i'm like what i, I would get confused kind of well, I would see a lot of, like, they would always be playing on TV. They would always be playing reruns of the Planet of the Apes TV series. There was, like, a TV series. I've never series, seen the TV like, series. After, after the first couple movies, they had a TV series. And and then they, like, re-edited the TV series into, like, movies and stuff. I was very familiar with the TV series. It was, like, in sort of constant rotation and stuff. And so that's the Planet of the Apes that I knew. It was like w way before I ever saw the movie. And so it was like, um, it wasn't Cornelia. It was Roddy McDowell, but he plays Galen. Oh, wow. And, and it wasn't, you know, just Charlton Heston on his own. It was two astronauts that were there together. And the astronauts looked exactly like Starsky and Hutch. It was like two other actors, but it's like they found a Starsky and they found a Hutch. You know, it was like they, they had, uh, they, they knew what they were going for. It was like around around that time, they kind of like goof on each other. And I, I, feel, I feel like the, the one guy uh, who would have been played by like Ben Stiller, you know, yeah. in the Starsky and Hutch movie, because I forget which one's Starsky and which one's Hutch, but the one who, who like uh, has like sort of the dark curly hair, I feel like he was like always chewing gum. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm not sure where he got gum on the Planet of the Apes, but <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> he's got like Bubba Bubba. He's yeah. like Tommy yeah. Lasorda yeah. dugout. He's got his stash of gum. <laughs> One of the first things I ever dubbed off of, like you know, I, you know, got had two VCRs connected them together, and then would like rent you know Planet of the the, the whole series of Planet of the Apes and dubbed them. This is a new acquisition. Oh, okay. like my buddy. Uh, this is the set I I always wanted the Planet of the Apes set, and uh, my buddy was like cleaning. So is this widescreen or? Uh, um, I'm not sure. Pan I didn't... And scan. Like usually, if it's a VHS, it's usually going to be pan, pan and scan. scan. But I was I was looking on the back. This is '95, <laughs> and it said the, it's the 30th anniversary edition. Okay, wow, yeah. <laughs> so it's like another. Uh, yeah, it's disgusting. been another, yeah. yeah, and so it's uh, it's what the um, it's it's almost the 30th anniversary of 1995. <laughs> You think about um, my like Planet of the Apes, uh, like refocus was when watching The Simpsons. Yes. The Planet of the Apes. Planet of the, the Apes, musical. the musical. Yes. That like um, retrained me onto this Planet right, of the Apes. Right. Yeah. Like he's like, you'll never make a monkey mm -hmm. out of me. But then he's like, you finally made a <laughs> monkey out of me. Yes, we, we finally, finally made. made a... Or he's like, I hate every chip I. C from chip or ape, ape I see from chimpanzee chimpan to chimpanzee, chimpan 
And then yeah, like a classic. Was that also, or was it a different episode where it was Luke be a Jedi tonight? <laughs> Luke be a Jedi, Jedi tonight. <laughs> guys and dolls. We're just a bunch of crazy guys. And dolls. <laughs> or Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dr. Z the doc how can I forget the other yeah, Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Is that supposed to be Falco? Yeah, like, supposed to be Falco Amadeus. Amadeus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so brilliant. Oh, man, those early days of the this Simpsons. Is, holy shit. I was just watching some of the Treehouse of Horror and I, I watched I watched the first one and then I skipped to mo like the most recent one and they had like a Death Note parody and stuff oh. in like anime style Bart wow. and Lisa. I, I was thinking about like re jumping into like New Simpsons. It's I been a little while. It's been it's it's been at least ten. It's years, still on yeah. the the air. Yeah, New episodes are, are still being. It's made. never gonna. St I mean that that'll probably be the first like AI shit like that. <laughs> that like they 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 have no qualms. I think about going like full AI on it. The uh, it's got a Harry Shearer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great radio voice. All I knew about Guys and Dolls was like the Simpsons episode where. Mark Hamill is in Guys and Dolls, and he and, and they make him wear his Luke Skywalker outfit and his light and hold his lightsaber, but like, it, what, like I went there like Guys and Dolls, we're just a bunch of crazy guys. Like it's like I would have didn't believe that from that, but then then I finally saw Guys and Dolls, and it's pretty good. It's it's a good it's a good movie. I was zeroing in on like just random like jokes, one off jokes. <laughs> Groundskeeper Willie, they were trying to like. Um, Show them in a bad light, mm -hmm. and they're like, they called him Roddy Roddy Peter. Well, because they're, you know, like Homer was like the first one to get this, but they would always have, like, an, they would have an episode where you'd end up on a current affair, <laughs> a <know>? current affair, <laughs> <laughs> and and they do this, you know, they do this like um, gotcha journalism kind of stuff. So like, there was an episode where they did that with. Homer, that was like the first one, but uh, I'm sure they got around to, to um, groundskeeper Willie. Yeah. I knew the TV show, and also on the TV show, it's like, okay, there's apes, they're in charge, but like, the humans all talk, and it's no big deal. Yeah. Like, they all talk, it's no big, like, they're, they're wearing sort of tattered clothes, but there's, they're, it's not, they're not like just, um, you know, cattle, basically, like, or, or, or even like pests, they're, they're, they're kind of like pests in the movie. And um, and so I, I just knew that show. And the show was a lot more sort of like warm and fuzzy. Like this Planet of the Apes didn't seem so bad. Like yeah, it seemed like, like, oh, that'd be an okay yeah. place to live and stuff. Um, and it was also like, I think I talked about this in another episode, where it was like the first time I saw that trope of where like the water is on fire and then oh, you have yeah. to like stay under the Love water. Love that. Yeah, That's a great... They, they had that. When I saw Planet of the Apes for the first time when I was really little, same with like Teen Wolf... Like Teen Wolf freaked me out, and it was supposed to be like, and mm -hmm. and I also I was freaked out by the 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 the, the apes and the, mm -hmm. the apes. like I was scared. Well, they, that, they scared me. That, that for me, like yeah, so like the the TV show would be in like rerun all the time, but not the movie so much. The movies would be like kind of like a special occasion. But then I was over at somebody's house where they were watching a VHS of Planet of the Apes, and I came in like right at the scene where he's like in the museum and he sees that like they stuffed and mounted one of his friends in there and i was like whoa this this is not like, like there was nothing like that on the tv, TV series show. i'm like this 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 thing plays for keeps like uh, like it was kind of disturbing and i was like Scary. okay i got i got to check this yeah and and then like not too long after that there's a scene where he finds one of his friends and he has like a, a like a lobotomy, lobotomy scar. scar and stuff yeah. another thing that freaks me out but now i'm like but when i was little but like i was it's one of like the ultimate crowning achievements of the movie. The score of it is so good. Great Jerry score. Gold, I think it's Jerry Goldsmith. Yeah, so awesome. Like that score, it freaks me out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like so... it's, it's atonal. It kind of reminds me of the uh, West Side Story score. Yeah, you know? like it's... those like shrieky horn. Type yeah, horns coming, and... and then there's there's like uh, uh, ape noises. Yeah, in it, which they, the ape noises. I feel like the ape noises in it. Or like that thing where you have this like wooden <laughs> box with a hole in it and then like a wooden stick that you, you like, yeah. they go in there. <laughs> you know? David Lee Roth has one of those. He's, <laughs> he's, he's doing fully work on his show. He's... This was the first time I saw it big screen because I was watching it on my projector yeah. and stuff. And it works really nicely. And there's like kind of the first part of the movie where they land on the planet and it looks like, oh my, like, like, we're going to be dead soon because we have our supplies. They're not going to last forever. And there's like just nothing on this planet. Like this planet is totally deserted. And it's like a really exciting sequence because like 
the camera's moving around. There's like lens flare. Yeah. There's like atmosphere. And, and it, it feels like uh, Lawrence of Arabia wasn't that long before it. And it, it seems like, like, like it, 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 it looks like they're going for some like Lawrence of Arabia kind of shots, but in yeah. like sort of like a, you know, California desert or something. The, um, one of the writers wrote on Lawrence of Arabia. Okay. So there's that connection. That makes sense. Yeah. It, it felt like that. And, and again, it like had those, those shots and stuff where it's like, Oh, I've seen this in star Wars, you know? So it's yeah. like, okay, it's triple deja vu. Cause it's star Wars, planet of the it's, apes and, and, and Lawrence of Arabia. Arabia yeah. you know? It's still seeing like the apes on the horseback is like unsettling. Yeah. In those scenes where they're just wandering the desert, I realized like that, that section of the movie is so visually arresting. And I think it's because like the plot gets a lot more like intricate and, and, and the, the plot is kind of, you know, it's a, it's a more dense plot, like, after that sequence. Like the, yeah. like, the movie really accelerates after that in terms of story. But that early part, it in story terms, it's just kind of guys walking around in the desert and arguing with each Like, like yeah. their, their conversations are compelling. But they had to find a way to make it kind of exciting. So, like, again, all the count. And, and as a result, it's an extremely lively section of the movie. Once you learn the twist in the movie, mm -hmm. I think it doesn't hurt it. No, right. It's like it's it uh it, it kind of like makes it even better. <laughs> like yeah, the twist is kind of like um like I don't know I don't know if I was ruin it once. I'm, I'm trying to think if there was ever a time that I saw it without knowing the twist. I did. Yeah, you're right. Because I, I like I would like didn't, didn't, I, wouldn't wouldn't like especially I, if I watched the the uh, I mean the TV series. I'd assume it was just a given. I must have known it, but it's still. Yeah. But yeah, how do we learn that? Like, yeah. it's like somehow we we gain that. Uh, I might have even like not gotten to the end and saw the on Simpsons. the Simpsons yeah. before. To be honest, like, and went back and like then watched the whole movie. Yeah. Through. Even this time rewatching it, it still creeps up on you too. Like it so, does. You're right. The, the movie's right. going in like different directions. It's written by Rod Serling. Like the script is written by Rod Serling. And it does, it is kind of like a lost Planet of the, I mean, a lost Twilight Zone episode. Yeah. It has the rhythm of a Twilight Zone. And there are a ton of Twilight Zone episodes that are kind of like that, mm -hmm. where they land on a planet and wander through like probably the same desert, you know, just. Yeah. Uh, Twilight Zone would have sort of like a cold open. It would have like a pre credit sequence. And this has that too. It just kind of starts, they're in the spaceship. Yeah. And then they go into like the hibernation and then the credits start. Like it, it was just missing having like Rod Serling come out and like talk <laughs> to you. Do his intro. Yeah. The stuff I also forget more is the is the can, my brain's rotting. The negative zone or the um, oh the, the forbidden, forbidden zone. zone. Yeah, and uh, I always forget about like I'm like what, wait what's the forbidden zone again? Why are they? And then it's like oh yeah, a lot of those scarecrows they have those little. Well yeah, that was like another thing this time around watching it. Um, on like a big screen. There's things I never noticed before that, that might, might have even been like cropped in, in terms of like aspect ratio or something in the thing. Cause like my recollection of that movie is like they're wandering through this desert. And then the first thing that gives them any sign of like that there's life here is when they see those scarecrows. They're kind of like oh, yeah. X-shaped things. And again, that's like a really Love interesting those. choice of like this this uh, X is, X is covered with fur. Cause it's kind of scary. And it doesn't tip anything off. Like, they're, they're not, like, human or ape enough looking for you to be... Like, it's just like, okay, there's something here, but I'm, I'm a little creeped. Like, what, what the <laughs> fuck, fuck is are, this? You know, if that's what a scarecrow look, look, looks like, what's the actual thing look like? Those scarecrow things are one of my favorite, like, images from the whole movie. I, I, I love those things. So, like, this time around watching it, I've never noticed this before. But you have these, like, panoramic Lawrence of Arabia kind of shots. And then as... Uh, be before you get the reveal of the scarecrows you see these tiny little figures moving along and running, scampering along in the background as like the astronauts are walking in the foreground. You see these tiny, tiny, so like in the theater, you'd see those, but that never registered to me b before. Like they must've been too tiny for me to just see on TV or whatever. And so you see a couple shots of those and then you see the scarecrows. I got a new digital copy. I'm gonna yeah. HD copy to mm -hmm. watch. Um, I can't wait to see that. And I'm going to see if that, I, I didn't spot it the last time I watched it when they were streaming on HBO. And again, it's, they're, they're tiny enough that you, you can't, you know, you like, they could be like little gray aliens or something. You, yeah. you just don't know. You just see these little figures moving along and it's, it's, it's people. And then they have all their supplies and they're like, okay, like 
if we don't find anything, like we're kind of screwed, but you know, at least we have all this gear and then they go swimming and then like all their gear gets like stolen and smashed. <laughs> There's another Planet of the Apes thing I remember. When I was little, uh, in elementary school, we would wait at our bus stop and like my mom, you know, would drive us to the bus stop in the car. We would listen to the radio. And I can't remember what channel it was. It might have even been B94. I don't remember what station it was, but the, the DJs were doing, I'm in like fourth grade or fifth grade. The DJs are doing a bit where they're like, their intern like didn't show up for work. I remember mm -hmm. this. I'm like little, I'm a little kid. The DJ didn't show up. He was like their intern. So they're like, we're going to call him at home. So they call the, the, the guy at his house and his, he didn't answer, but his answering machine was dropped and asked him. And for some reason, it just said it was the get your stinking boss off. You damn dirty ape. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. His his answer machine was was Planet of the Apes. That I mean, you talk about like dispersal of information <laughs> in a screenplay. That is like really cool. like how he gets shot in the throat. I I think another one of the the, the astronauts gets shot in the throat. Like these these uh, uh, apes are all like aim for the throat. So then there's the thing of like you know he can't talk yet, and then his first word is like get chicken claws off of me, you damn dirty ape. And everybody's like oh. just like the whole culture of ape world. You yeah, know, like I love the, it. The the um the the uh, architecture so and and it's like that you're it, it's it's like of that you're, it's what like futuristic architecture like those earth homes oh the, yeah or earth ships or whatever they're called it's just like such a cool look and so like kind of of that moment and, and like when you see it you do think of planet of the apes and then it carries through into star wars like star wars yes. references some of that the action is great too great act yeah really amazing action stunt work yeah like because you think about like the things leading up to star wars and it is like, yeah, 2001 is an ingredient and Star Trek is an ingredient and you can see that, but it's like Planet of the Apes is in there too, and it is a lot of action, a lot of like jumping from thing to thing, you know, like when, yeah. when that, th there's a couple scenes of like, you know, Charlton Heston running through that city, really great little, you know, town and, and jump in and they're all jumping after him. I, mean, I don't think we get enough of it now, horseback action. Right. Yeah, I, I I think because now they actually care, care about, about the animals. horses and not yeah they don't you know <laughs> want, want to hurt them yeah but uh, it does look pretty great on camera like visceral and stuff yeah because yeah especially the a lot of times you'll see things in that movie in silhouette and stuff or you'll see it through like a haze and so, so just like the figure of like this like tall figure up on horseback I have stock in Elmer's <laughs> <laughs> there's a picture of Jerry Goldsmith performing like when he was recording the score he has uh the 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 mask the ape mask okay. on that's funny the movie kind of it like kind of like slows down and like it, it like it changes its pace once you know charlton heston ends up in the ape yeah. city and so it's kind of like this really beautiful extended thing and then it be then it becomes a little more like okay now it's a movie like now now it, or, or almost like a stage play or like a lot yeah. of a lot of it, it's less sort of uh, mise-en-scene or whatever, and more <laughs> kind of like, okay, we're on a set and people are talking and stuff. But uh, when Dr. Zayas starts showing up, it's it's like the deck is so stacked against Charlton Heston. Because like watching that, that movie a bunch of times, it's kind of like, oh, it's going to be a real shock for these apes when they find out that this guy can talk. But like from the first moment Dr. Zayas shows up, he's like, like he knows <laughs> and he doesn't want, you know, it's a little infuriating because it's kind of like, I, I don't know, it makes me think of when I was a kid or something where, you know, teachers and stuff just don't, like, they, they, they're just never going to listen to you about mm. anything. Like, they're going to assume that you're, <laughs> you know, just horsing around or whatever. I like to try to watch it, like, once a year. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's, it's a, a classic. It's a classic, a stalwart. What, what I've never done is watch all of them all the way through. And now, when I was a kid. Me neither. I loved Planet of the Apes Part 2. Oh yeah, with the Beneath atomic the bomb. The yeah, Apes. yeah, I loved that, and and it really like blew my mind and kind of captivated me. And it it was kind of like Return of the Jedi, where like when I got a little bit older, I started like reading like Starlog magazine and stuff like, and I started yeah. hearing that like, oh, that's a bad planet. Planet Beneath the Planet of the Apes is a bad planet. So I was kind of like, oh yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah, that one stinks. Yeah, let me watch. It. But like, I was always really fascinated with that one. Uh, like, I mean, the first one's the classic. I love the second one. And there are like a couple moments. There are some like really amazing moments in the second one too. 
And then I always loved the third one because like the third one was so much fun where like the apes come to earth. It's kind of like a oh, reverse. I, I, that, that, I haven't seen that one. A pretty woman or something because it has like a uh, shopping montage <laughs> and stuff where they buy like groovy new the 70s ape goes outfits. And he, he yeah, and stuff. She like, <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she reaches for a banana. And this one was a lot of fun for me. And then loved, oh, I loved Conquest. Oh, oh, and, you know, the other thing about Conquest, oh, oh, like Conquest oh. is genuinely great, but oh. Conquest was another one where like, the sci science fiction magazines. And sometimes, like, there was, like, Planet of the Apes magazine where it would be, like, comics and articles. And they would talk this one up. They would say, like, this is the best of the series. So then I was kind of like, yeah, yeah. Conquest is... And I, I owned all of these, like, again, like I said, dubbed all, all, <laughs> all of these. But the one I never watched all the way through, as to this day, I've never watched Battle for the Planet of the Apes all the way through. Oh. But I, I, feel like, I feel like I need to, like, go through the whole series and, and, and watch that one. I finally get it now. Like I remember going into Suncoast video and seeing this in there all the time, mm -hmm. and being like on VHS and being like, "Oh my god!" So we should borrow that. This is so, it's going to be so weird watching this on like an original tape and not a dub because like yeah, that's what we had. Yeah. But I never watched it. And again, it was another one where like the articles would all say, "Oh, this is the worst." That that. Uh, uh, part two is pretty bad, but battle is the worst. But I, I want to watch some VHS. And this is one with Paul, that's Paul Williams in oh, Chim sure. in uh, wow. Orangutan. Uh, he starts playing a little music, little like yeah, he's tickling, he's, the he's tickling the ivory. He's tickling the ivory. Moving right along. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we're moving right along. <laughs> There's a really famous um, Johnny Carson clip that you should watch, where Paul Williams was filming Beneath the Planet of the Apes, or or he was filming Battle for the Planet of the Apes, and then he uh, came straight from the set to the Johnny Carson show. So he's there in full ape regalia. You know, Holy sort of holding shit. court with Johnny Carson. It's pretty good. Dude, I, I gotta look that up. Yeah, that, like... yeah, watch that. Battle for the Planet of the Apes, like, it has such a great title, too. Because it's kind of easy to forget which one's which, but Battle is such a great title. But... Do you want to watch Conquest on VHS? Uh, yeah, of course. Wanna... I had my dubbed Planet of the Apes set. I think I watched Conquest the most because it was kind of like, I'd already watched the first one and part two and part, th like, I'd already watched them a bunch of times, but, like, Conquest was kind of, so, like, then I was like, this, this it was kind of like a fresh we, one. We me. talk about going whole hog. Remember, we, why, why don't you just take the, the whole set and, okay, and, and, and work rock my way through? Yeah, I do think of the little, the little oh, like, yeah. uh, uh, the little tracking. static, the tracking uh, in my like, you know, poorly, like high speed or dubbed. I'm in a sci-fi state of mind. Dude, I, I had a, um, I was thinking like, you know, stuff crashing on planets and stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a really cool, uh, I have like a Star Wars idea. <laughs> Listen to this. <laughs> I, think you're gonna, I think you're going to dig this. It, it's uh, on Endor, right after Return of the Jedi, when like the bunker blows up. And uh, there's like a droid that's like from the Empire still in that bunker. Mm -hmm. It's like the Terminator in Star Wars. Yeah. So the droid comes out. There's a Ewok that's like, dan like, like was, you know, hurt in the battle. That the Ewok hates the rebels. So this like droid takes the Ewok like, like makes it like prepares it with like metal and shit mm -hmm. and the ewok this is like an ewok that got like got kicked out like like he was against them palling like he wanted to eat the rebels remember there was the yeah. moment where they were going to cook them on a spit he wanted to eat, eat them, them and, and, and he hit. didn't like that they teamed up they teamed up so the the uh the the droid the, the empire like the eve like the bound like i don't know what the deal was with this droid but the droid like for some reason like connects with the ewok and like leaves the planet to go like after like Han Solo <laughs> or Luke get, get that bounty <laughs> get that bounty it can translate that's cool that's that Do you like that? yeah that's that's your we, like we Disney should... Plus series <laughs> when I was in high school I uh, made like a little like story like I I would call it a comic or whatever but I never like it was just like drawings in my notebook during class that, yeah like, all kind of it's part of a story but after the first Star Wars movie you know how like um. Uh, Darth Vader's TIE fighter just starts spinning off yeah. into the thing and then he like course corrects and then he flies. Well, that my story was that he got knocked close to the planet Endor and like had to like land there. So this is like before Return of the Jedi and he lands on the planet oh, Endor wow. and he meets a bunch of Ewoks. Now it's not the exact Ewoks that we saw in Return of the Jedi. It's like another tribe of Ewoks or whatever. And he's 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 got his little beacon up and waiting to get like picked up. So while he's getting wait, waiting to get picked up uh, you know, by the Empire, he he's kind of bored. And so what he does is he, like, kind of... The, the way that they, like, all worshipped C-3PO, 
like they all like worship Darth Vader and, and instead of kind of being like, hey, look, I don't want like he's playing it up. And so and, and they all start wearing kind of like black hoods instead of the the sort of tan and, and multicolored shit, hoods. Holy shit, this is fucking... And he's, he starts this cult of Darth Vader and they build statues that look like 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 Darth Vader's head and stuff like that all all through the planet and stuff. And and then he kind of like turns them against each other and instigates like just just to occupy just to keep himself from being bored while he's waiting to Dude, get rescued. Fucking great. And and kind of sets up this whole this whole little civilization. And then um and then he gets and then you know finally like you know like one of those uh you know imperial ships shuttle like, Tidarium. the shuttle Tidarium or whatever lands and picks him up. Oh and, my and god, then, that's what and he... then when he gets into space he has them de he detonates <laughs> all those Ewoks that like worship oh him. From, again, it's just like a total Dude, sadist. That's and, fucking and so amazing. that was that was the vignette. That was like the little story. Dude, that... Ewoks we never got to see because they got like roasted by the end. Wow. Of the, you know. Yeah, like anything any more Ewok action is like Yeah, that was a big uh I think they missed the boat with all these uh the sequel trilogy <sighs> for, for only, I, I think there was only like one shot of Ewoks Dude, in it, maybe. That's a great that, that's yeah. an awesome more Ewoks, I, like, I, and I want I want the Ewoks reclaimed because I feel like whatever complaints people have about the Ewoks, like you can make them cool, like like they they've made all kinds of stuff in Star Wars yeah. cool now, stuff that we thought would never be cool. They've they've kind of rehabilitated uh, at this point, you know, all the um, you know Clone Wars stuff and prequel stuff. So like, I I think I think the the Ewoks could be amazing just with like Planet of the Apes and like. Mm -hmm. The Star Wars new series. I just had like Star Wars yeah. like sci-fi like on the brain heavily. Well, you know, I, I also had a a Planet of the Apes pitch also. Before I get to that, like when the Mark Wahlberg Planet of the Apes came out, the, the uh, Tim Burton Planet of the oh, Apes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like so excited because it's like, finally, I'm alive for a Planet of the Apes <laughs> movie. Like all the Planet of the Apes movies were made before I was born. And now I can finally, see, you know, see a new one in the theater. And so, like, I got to see it. And, yeah, underwhelmed. I, I maybe saw it that one time. I don't think I saw it, like, I, ever again after that. I saw it once. Me and my buddy went and saw it, like, the night before we were heading to, like, scout camp for mm -hmm. the week. We were like, we're going to see the Planet of the Apes movie as, like, a little, like, appetizer to our week at camp. And, like, it was a packed theater. And I remember... Like, the manager came out in a gorilla costume mm -hmm. to, like, give a spiel about candy or something. Mm -hmm. And the crowd, like, turned on him. Mm -hmm. And he took his mask off and was, like, trying... Like, the people started, like, throwing stuff at That's him. bad, yeah. And, like, it was, like, a hot crowd. They... Like, <laughs> he had a gorilla costume. <laughs> yeah, you're asking for trouble. Okay. I love a good comedy gorilla. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> That, like... You know, Planet of the Apes, you just have so much to live up to, and the tw and the twist in it. Like, it, it, um, I th I think M Night Shyamalan, like he's a huge Twilight Zone fan. Yeah. but I feel like there's a lot of Planet of the Apes in his movie. Like, oh I feel God. like The Village has some like Planet Love of the, the Apes village. to you're, it. You're right. It has because it has the. I think they have like wooden like kind of like scarecrow type things. Yeah, so. that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, there's like scarecrow stuff, and like I feel like, and, and I I feel like it's it, you know it kind of there's the same kind of danger. Of kind of like once you're sort of known for being like the guy with the twist and so I, like with um, Tim Burton, Planet of the Apes, it's kind of like where's the twist, you know? Like yeah. not, you know, they I think they kind of force one at the end or whatever. But then this like the the recent Planet of the Apes series that they did was like amazing, dude. I still haven't seen any of the new they're ones. So yet. good. Every single like the the weakest one is actually the first one. Like like they're all good, but like the first of the new Apes movies. Uh, it's it's pretty good, but it gets the series gets better wow. as it goes on. I can't wait. And, to watch um, this. Battle for the one of them is called Battle for the like there's oh, one there, so there's neat. one called Conquest of the Planet of the Apes and one's called Battle uh, for the Planet of the Apes and like Battle is like amazing. Like it's it's kind of cool that like Battle which which is kind of you know the the not great uh, or known yeah. as like the not great Apes movie that like in, with the new ones it's like incredible. I can't wait to watch this. I th I think they were Matt Reeves productions oh yeah my brain's rotting what, what did matt reeves do again why, why am i losing well, my mind i mean he did he's a jj abrams collaborator yeah. and he also did uh you know the new batman movie yeah the batman the new apes is um really cool. it's phenomenal it's it's really really good all the all the new apes one we'll have to once i get those under my belt we'll have to do a, a the new apes 
Mm -hmm. Do a new apes mm -hmm. episode. Yeah. Just great script. I mean, it's there's like twist within twist within twist within twist, and then the big twist. Mm -hmm. Like it's so and and um, you know, and there's sections that you kind of forget. Like you kind of remember all the the major moments, but then there's like. Uh, when they're at the archaeological dig and oh, stuff yeah. like that part's so great and and the back and forth and um it's kind it's not a happy ending for um cornelius and zira the two apes who help charlton heston because then you know they keep going back and forth as to, like um dr zayas kind of like promises a bunch of stuff and then it turns out he's full of shit and yeah. stuff. and so at a certain point they're being threatened with um you know, being charged with treason, which is kind of like the highest, you know, you could be, you know, executed for treason. But then by the end, it's kind of like they reduce, like, like Dr. Zaya says, okay, you're not going to be, you're not going to be executed for treason. You're just going to be uh, arrested for heresy where you, you'll maybe spend like a year in jail or whatever. <laughs> so like, that's the end of their story. And it's like, wow, that's kind of like, they're going back home to go to jail. And again, oh yeah, they're not going to get executed, but they're going to be in jail for, for a year, year. In ape jail for a year. But then because they're sequels, we do get to see more of them and find yes. out that like, yeah, things aren't good. They have a map in the movie. There's a map of the planet of the apes. And it what like, to me, it was always so like, disappointing how small that world because it's like okay we got ape city which again you kind of see the entirety of ape city in the movie and it's not that huge it's not a sprawling <laughs> metropolis and then you have and then you have the forbidden zone and then like you're just not allowed to, so it's like a tiny so there's all this there's a lot of planet of the ape to be explored they just kind of scratched the surface i feel like there could have been like maybe other cities or maybe other like right and, and they have such a tightly controlled theocracy in that, in, in, like the society, I like the thought they put into in, in the structuring of the ape society, but it's such a tightly controlled theocracy that I wouldn't be surprised if maybe there were like other ape communities that were maybe even more advanced, but that they're, you know, the orangutans, like Dr. Zayas and all them kind of like forbid them from knowing, about, again, kind of like the village, yes. you know, where they're like kind of forbidden to learn. So maybe, maybe the apes that we met in Planet of the Apes were like this, this, um, this like colony of crackpots of sort of like religious zealots, religious oh. nuts that are kind of like have have cordoned themselves off away from the larger Large, and, and yes. so maybe there is like a bus with like cars and stuff like a bus like maybe wow. this is like maybe there like you can go to like this place where there's like cities. And That's stuff. A I feel like they might have gotten into this in some of the, like the Planet of the Apes comics in the eighties mm -hmm. or something like because I, I feel like I've seen images of like. Planet of the Apes comics from the 80s where it's like, you know, they're like in a city and stuff. Yeah. But in the novel, the, the ape civilization was much more advanced. It was kind of pretty much like modern America or, or human society uh, at the time that the book was written. He kind of, you know, he kind of lands on this planet that's inhabited, you know, completely by apes. But they have cities, they have cars, they have TV. The, the village, I love the village. One, It's one of my top three M. Night Shyamalan movies. Yeah. I'm a big fan of that one. Yeah, we'll have to, have to do some M. Night. Shamal and stuff. And he, he Philly would, Zone. Philly Zone. Shaman. He he would he might be a good candidate to actually make a Planet of the Apes movie. Oh, for sure. I'm sure I'm sure he's had like a pitch or something. Yeah. I'm sure he's had some meetings. I, I wouldn't be surprised if when they made this new batch, if he wasn't kind of like in the running for like being somebody to, to yeah. work on. Because um I still haven't seen uh old yet. Old's great. Yeah, the, I saw that. The, the, the log lines, it sounds like a Twilight Zone episode. Mm -hmm. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. I am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee, and Jack Kirby's Star Warriors, The Adventures of Adam Starr and the Solar Legion. I'm also the author of Witchman, a new comic book. I'm Matt Zioli. We'll see you on the Planet of the Apes. You know? Yeah.